Hello, everyone. Welcome to MicroStrategy World 2022 Embedded Analytics Track. My name is Priya Kadati, Director of Solutions Management at MicroStrategy. I've been with the company since 2008, and it's my pleasure to serve as a moderator for all the sessions in this track throughout the day. I am pleased to introduce two of our highly sought after speakers. Please welcome Antoine Isali, Worldwide OEM Solutions Architect, and Mohammed Abul Siad, Senior Vice President, Product Manager for OEM. Antoine and Mo, please tell our audience a little bit about yourself and kickstart today's presentation. The floor is all yours. Thank you so much, Priya. Hi, everyone. My name is Antoine Isli. I've been with MicroStrategy for about five years, and I'm looking after our OEM business. So let me give you a quick explanation about what it is. I'm uh, helping either software companies who need uh, analytics technology to be injected in their own offer. Uh, but I'm helping as well, you know, enterprise customers, banks, insurance, um, retailers to um, drive value out of their data and actually start monetizing it by creating, you know, supplier portals and um, making sure that they can actually leverage it, leverage this new digital asset. Hey guys, and I'm Mohammed Abu Soud. I've been with MicroStrategy for a little over 11 years now, starting in consulting, working in support, working in our amazing enterprise support program, and lately uh, moving to the tech team. I'm super excited to uh, talk to you today about what is coming out uh, or what is out already uh, when it comes to embedding analytics, when it comes to DevOps, CI, CD, and also talk a little bit about what's coming in the future in our future sessions. All right, let's jump right in. So uh, I tried to take a stab at defining what's uh, embedded analytics, and I went all in. So for me, embedded analytics is bringing intelligence everywhere. That's a pretty intense statement, right? So let's take a step back one more time. Intelligence nowadays is the ability to browse through a massive sea of data, you know, historical and potentially predictive and try to make sense out of it, potentially through a beautiful visualization that makes those insights, you know, humanly understandable. So the way we've been proceeding to achieve that goal, um, you know, had been to find a platform that could read from all those different data sources, you know, relational databases, some cloud native um, data storage, but also, you know, some of your business apps, for example, that are feeding you data through APIs, for example. So the idea is to have this one platform that can be plugged into each one of those uh, different data sources. So we don't create a gazillion different silos and provide this beautiful visualization. If you're attending Mac Strategy World, you're probably all pretty far along in this journey. So once we've done that, have we achieved intelligence everywhere? Not really. So the insights are right here, but they're going to often be a few clicks away, sometimes one clicks, sometimes more, but they exist in your you know, analytics module as part of your software, or they are in your beautiful you know, analytics portal that your, all your employees are invited to go to, but that they don't necessarily do take advantage of. So in the end, we build this very sophisticated platform, but what we end up having is isolated analytics, meaning that we have all those insights that are right there, but are our employees accessing it? Not always. Are our users accessing it if we're building software? Not always. So we're reaching complete adoption. It would be great to have total adoption, right? That would mean everyone would make very doubtful decisions that have the highest probability of being the right one when you have data to back it up. And one important element to keep in mind, specifically if you are building software, is that it's potentially missed revenue opportunity. Either because you're missing some upsell opportunities by having some customers that could be interested in getting into uh, additional analytics that you might be able to provide, or a missed opportunity because those particular customer went to see a competitor. Because what they do is asking them to do the same decisions but by putting a tiny bit more information in front of them 
while they're asking users to take a decision. So they're making it a little bit easy for everyone to press the right button. So how do we get there? How does the journey start? We kind of have to ask ourselves a couple of questions. Obviously, if uh, you are in the business of building software, the first question you're going to ask yourself is like, hey, maybe I want to build it myself. You could. It's a challenging journey, though, because um, it's going to take a lot of time and it's going to drive focus out of your key engineers, uh, out of your the core value of your application. So instead, you could be looking at the third party application that have 30 years of R&D packed into, uh, you know, some razor sharp focus analytics platform. So the first obvious question is, does my analytics platform have embedded capabilities, right? Pretty obvious. Now, do I have to hire a team of rocket scientists to bring those analytics and inject it into my platform? Or is it going to be made in a way that is going to be easier, easier, that is going to be simple for me to inject it? Now, once the analytics is infused in my application, is it gonna be smart enough to inherit context from the parent application? Like, you know, where the user is in its journey, you know, uh, am I getting some filtering back from the application to the visualization? Or am I gonna make this visualization actually actionable by helping users go to the next best action i see this like you know scary red bar chart maybe i want to click on it and do something in my core application move some you know items from point a to point b that's the kind of thing that um you should be thinking of and finally one that is like way too overlooked if you are in the business of building software or if you have a team uh, of you know operational um, engineers that are working into customizing your business application architecture for your employees, they may have processes, DevOps, CI, CD. And the idea here is that do you want to reinvent the wheel and have uh, the analytics platform actually running on something completely separate? Or do you want to actually make sure that your analytics platform is following your existing guidelines and can actually be plugged into your existing system? Well, let's take a look at where MicroStrategy stands when you're asking yourself these questions. All right, so first, can I get data out of all my data sources? Yep, checked. Can I design beautiful visualizations out of all the data sources that I'm connected to? Yes. Checked. Now let's take a look at what happened when you look at the embedding capabilities. There are two different ways that you can look at uh, the embedding um, project. There is hyperintelligence and there's embedding SDK. And we're gonna look at each one of them. So what's hyperintelligence? It's one of the way I like to describe it. It's that it's the fastest time to market across the industry when it comes to embedding analytics, period. There's like no other way that you can achieve that speed, uh, that speed to implement intelligence into your application. Because the mindset and the workflow to like get insights into your application is completely different from the traditional embedding experience. Here, you're not like dedicating time and efforts, you know, trying to figure out what part of your screen should be hosting analytics, what workflow deserves to have some additional insights. The only thing you focus on is uh, understanding within your business, what are the keywords and IDs that are going to be meaningful for your users to have some contextual information in order to help them make better decisions. So let's take uh, some example with like, you know, hand-picked, um, you know, industries. You're building your healthcare software. What might be, you know, valuable for your users to know is information around patient ID or maybe some kind of medication names that should like bring up information uh, around those. If you're working in the world of real estate, it could be zip codes, lot number, MLS number. If you're building... Um, Network security application it could be an IP address. It could be a user ID, you know, in order to identify an odd behavior. If you're working in the world of HR, it could be an employee name, an expense number, something that would deserve to have additional contextual information to make the right next best action. 
So once you figure this out, building the actual card is real easy. It's doing a couple of drag and drops into one of our templates and designing it just like you want it, meaning having the right information, the right visualizations just at your users and employees' fingertip. But one thing that is extra important to consider when you're in this design phase is the linking capability that the card provides. It's the ability to bring the user that actually see this card showing up on their screen when they hover over one of those keywords. They can actually head to the next best action. You know, sometimes it's going to be drilling to a deeper level of analytics. But it could be much more sophisticated than that. Like, for example, bringing your user into one of your existing workflows in context. So once you've done that, how do you bring this capability into your application? So this is where we are just handing you over about 15 lines of prescribed code. So it's not even code that you have to write yourself. And this code can easily be injected into your platform. And once this is done, the hyperintelligence capability will be there wherever those keywords and those IDs are being identified. Everything is automated. And so that means that it's going to show up on all the use cases that you know will make sense for your users, but it will also show up for a bunch of different use cases that you didn't even thought about where the information will make sense to be available to your users and will provide value that you were not even planning to bring to the table, right? So let's take a look at how it can look like uh, with a particular use case. This is a learning management system, the kind of application that you'll use if you're a school, a university, or a company that you know, needs to empower your uh, employees' knowledge. So here, teachers or trainers will have you know, a real quick uh, look at you know, how their different lessons plan are being adopted by users, uh, where they are in the learning curve, but also when they're in live training sessions or live lessons, they can actually quickly take a look at each of the connected students and potentially identify in advance of anything happening the ones that are going to need some extra attention. A student that is about to drop out, for example. And this is not where you want to end up your journey. You want to enable them through this hyperintelligence experience to take the next best action. So in the case of the student, for example, it might be reaching out to the student, have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, understanding what's going on and hopefully um, correcting it before anything happened. So that's the value proposal of hyperintelligence, the fastest way to embed intelligence into an existing application. Now, looking at um, the embedding SDK. This is a more traditional way to embed information where you know where you want to have your visualization, you know where you want to infuse it, so you take your existing analytics content and just plugging into your application in dedicated parts of your screen. This is something that historically uh, could have been seen as complex. So we worked hard on making it accessible to everyone, developers, but also non-developers. And you'll learn a lot more about that in a session dedicated to the embedding playground that we uh, designed and that is making this very accessible to everyone within your organization. And one of the most important pieces that we're doing very differently from uh, what you'll find elsewhere in the world of analytics is the idea of making every single visualization much more than just a pretty picture on the screen, making it actionable, meaning bringing knowledge from your application to the visualization but also making it clickable so your users can interact with it and do the next best thing that should be happening when they interact with an odd, you know, big red bar chart, for example. So as I said, you'll know a lot more about the embedding SDK playground in the dedicated session, but I quickly wanted to put it on the screen to explain that building this embedding experience is now fully available through drag and drop. And um, again, 
one of the core items here is to always be thinking not only about how it's going to look like, but how users are going to be able to interact with it. So in this example, for example, every time someone clicks on a specific data point on, the, on this little line chart, I have the data, the context that is brought out of MicroStrategy and being injected in this little alert window that is really here and as an example, that is not MicroStrategy. This is like your own code, meaning that once you get the data out of MicroStrategy, you could decide to do anything you might want. And so this, again, of course, depends on your industry. Looking back at our example, if you're in the world of healthcare, you could be looking at something odd at, with a very specific patient and schedule a follow-up just with one click. Or if you're working in real estate, you could be identifying a few properties and sending listings to your um, prospective customers by uh, using my strategies and distribution services, for example. You're working in the world of software security, network security. Well. If you see a user that is sending so much data that it triggers all your alarms, you could just click on this particular odd behavior and apply a specific quarantine rule to this particular user and have his network shut down while he's being investigated. If you're working in the world of HR and you see an expense that is um, following a very disturbing pattern, you could potentially flag it for a deeper analysis as well. So again, the idea is to go much beyond putting a pretty picture on the screen. The idea is making it an actionable part of your workflows, using the visual insights you're getting out of this analytics element and making it clickable, helping your user interact with it and go to the next best action. And on that note, I will be passing it to Mo. Thanks, Antoine. Well, when it comes to embedding analytics, it's, it, goes, it goes beyond just embedding a dossier or a, or a dashboard into your application. You need to think about orchestration. You need to think about managing that uh, embedded content, right? So if you're in DevOps, there are certain things that you need to think about. S things like, can I, can I pass my uh, user authentication from my app to the embedded analytics? Can I actually pass those privileges, the user privileges that I built in uh, my app into my embedding uh, analytics, or do I have to create that separately, right? Will I be able to deploy analytics content to production using the same orchestration tools, using my CI CD pipelines that I use already for my core application, right? Can I monitor the content of the embedded analytics uh, to optimize and enhance performance, to understand the user behavior? All of that you can do with MicroStrategy. As a matter of fact, what we love in MicroStrategy is that we don't just embed the front-end experience, we actually integrate with your CI CD pipelines. Think about everything from coding, building, testing, releasing, deploying, operations, monitoring, everything that you need to do for your application, we can integrate with you with automation that we've built with APIs and through also an interface. So let's take a few examples, right? All right, analytics by code. Say you want to build building from building a dossier to building a schema layer like uh, 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 metrics, attributes, all of that you can build with, uh, with our API layer. As a matter of fact, we have a, a, a library called Mysterio. It's basically a Python wrapper so, so that you can call any Python functions to achieve those results, right? Now you're ready to deploy an, uh, an environment or to upgrade your environment. You wanna do a little bit of testing first. We have a, a utility tool called Integrity Manager that allows you to test and validate the content from one environment to another or before and after upgrading. As a matter of fact, the deployment itself, we have streamlined it. Now it's very, very easy to deploy microservices with MicroStrategy and, uh, and, and with full orchestration layer that allow you to upgrade, allow you to scale everything that you need to do. And it's in a matter of, of seconds uh, to, to achieve, right? For, all, for more on that, actually, uh, we have a, a cloud track that uh, we're gonna talk more about it. And uh, as well as I would love for you to listen to NICE's presentation tomorrow to see how they actually already achieved that with MicroStrategy. Well, automation is not just about building content, it's about administration. So uh, we have co uh, Command Manager, for, for those of you who've been using MicroStrategy for a while, we have Command Manager that allow you to automate a lot of the administrative actions, whether, it, whether it's user management, scheduling, uh, subscriptions, all that you can do, but not only that, we've built a REST API layer that allows you to achieve all of those without having to open any tools in MicroStrategy. 
and integrate it with your CI CD pipeline. Well, you want to understand also how the users are using MicroStrategy. You want to understand how they, that, that which dossiers they're more interested in. How often do they open it? What is the performance of your applications that, uh, that you're embedding in your, uh, in your uh, portal, right? You can see all of that in real time with uh, platform analytics. As a matter of fact, check out NICE's presentation tomorrow. They are going to also talk about how they integrated all that with CloudWatch as well, right? Uh, object migration, we've always had a tool for object migration that gives you full flexibility, which objects you want to migrate, what are the, what are the dependencies on those objects, what happens if the objects or, or their dependencies are in the, uh, uh, you're moving them from one environment to another and the second environment actually already has those objects, what are the conflict resolution rules, so all of that you can achieve with MicroStrategy, but not only that, last year we, we deployed REST APIs that allow you to achieve the same thing without uh, opening any client tools. Let's take a minute to um, summarize what we discussed today before we jump into a couple of uh, track recommendation and Q&A. So looking back at embedded analytics, the idea here is to increase user adoption. Like analytics as a standalone solution will not get to a massive adoption just by design because people don't go on a specific app to find an insight when they could make a gut feeling decision, right? So it would definitely increase user adoption by not waiting for user to go and get analytics, but taking analytics and bringing it to them. Now, for a lot of those embedding use cases, it's also a potential to generate new revenues. Either you're an application provider that adds it as a differentiator from your competition, or you can even monetize as like for a premium, for example, to your users. And if you are not in the business of building software, it might be time for you to think about the value that the existing data you own has on the market and how you could drive a new revenue stream out of it by building a supplier portal, by building you know, a portal toward marketing department to get some anonymized insights out of the data that you own. With MicroStrategy, there are two ways to achieve that goal. Uh, the idea of using hyper-intelligence to beat any time to market uh, that exists in the industry and just Think about the insights you want to be bringing to your users and just enable it in a matter of day. And there is the embedding SDK that gives you the ability to think, uh, you know, through what use case you want to enable and bring the analytics content, inject it into your platform and make all those insights actionable, not just the pre picture. Finally, what Mo walked us through is what is something that is a little less obvious because not on the front end, but that is so important for you to make sure that you're always getting the highest return on invest out of your you know, embedding analytics project is the idea that you need to choose a solution that is thinking as a software company with the idea of seeing this embedding project as an actual you know, development effort that needs to be part of any existing CI CD pipelines, DevOps pipeline that you already might be using within your own organization. Now, we have plenty of great content over the next uh, two days. And if you can't, you know, attend to them all, uh, I do recommend to go back to the recordings after MicroStrategy World because there is going to be way too much content for anyone to handle in two days. Uh, so everything should be made available um, on demand after MicroStrategy World. Now I'm looking forward to be, you know, hearing from you. I see that some questions are starting to come. Yeah. We're all yeah. ears. Thanks, uh, Mo and Antoine, for this excellent presentation. We'll open the floor for questions and answers now. And uh, for the attendees, if you run out of time, we would follow up with you and answer your questions outside this session. And as always, you're welcome to connect with experts in our even platform or networking lounges. Or you can even um, send an email to, our, to your account executive to follow up on this session. The first question I have for both our speakers, any one of you could answer this. Uh, how do you get the embedded SDK playground? It's a great question. It's uh, an, a playground that has been made generally available very recently. 
and it's now available in both our through our um, website but our github presence as well we actually host it on github and it's um it's a way for everyone to get access to this embedded experience without having a hard learning curve to understand how things work right so we'll make sure that all those links are made obvious for everyone to have their hands on it. And we have a session coming up on the same topic at 4 p.m. today in the same track. So please tune into it. The second question I have is, so using embedded analytics, does it require a different license than web and library? That's a great question. And um, you're going to have uh, a lot of usage of the APIs, the underlying REST API that are actually powering a lot of like the embedding content. So those are going to be needed. If you're in the world of building software, one thing that is uh, very different from how we do business in the world of analytics is that all the licensing aspect is extremely flexible to match exactly how you monetize your own platform. So that's something to keep in mind when, whenever we're having those conversations. The third one is which authentication is supported by embedded analytics? Example, SAML, et cetera. Yep. Yes, SAML or IDT. So the same authentication method that you use with MicroStrategy, we can integrate with, uh, with uh, embedded analytics. Yeah, and we can integrate basically through either SAML or IDC with your own authentication method. Great. Are hypercards working on Edge Navigator or only with Chrome? That's a great question. So the, there are two different experiences with uh, hyperintelligence. The one that you've seen in the video is one that we call hyperintelligence SDK. It's the idea of taking the capability and injecting it into your existing application, right? So then it works absolutely everywhere. Every single user, no matter how they're you know, enjoying your platform, will benefit from this hover over experience with the insights just jumping to them when, um, when they need it. We have another way to um, leverage hyperintelligence called, I guess, hyperintelligence. And this is enabled through a browser extension that will work uh, mainly with Chrome, but with all the Chromium-based um, browser, you know, Edge being one of them, for example. The advantage is that when you use this capability, the hyperintelligence experience goes beyond your existing app. It will carry to every single interaction that your users might have with their web browser. So that means when they're browsing through you know, their Google search, but through any kind of business app that they might be using on their on your day-to-day. -day. And as I hope you've seen in the keynote, this extension can be completely white label to reflect your own branding. So you can carry this intelligence to your customer in your own name. We are embedding library. However, the sharing links share, bookmark, collaboration, breaks out of the embedded page. When will these URLs be configurable? Well, I, uh, I will highly invite you to join our OEM roadmap session tomorrow. There is more about that. Awesome. Uh, so you I don't want to ruin the surprise. <laughs> <laughs> don't ruin it, Ma. Uh, I have one last question. Um, I assume you need to enable course. Is there any other setting configuration changes needed as well to get embedded analytics to work? We are. We had the, you know, a change like the entire industry when we had this, uh, you know, Chrome uh, V80 update uh, was about a year ago. So, yes, you do have some uh, parameters to uh, tweak if you want to make sure that your cross-domain embedding is going to work seamlessly for your end users, and that's something that is, you know, very well documented within the MicroStrategy embedding documentation. It's like. One of the first time that, you know, any technology that you want to embed into your application, you'll have to think about nowadays. So it's uh, documented with MicroStrategy, but definitely not unique to MicroStrategy. It's going to be the same for any embedding element that you're gonna, you want to bring into your application. And that wraps up our Q&A. Thank you so much, um, Antoine and Mo, for answering all of those questions. Um, with that, we'll wrap the session. And for Thank all you. attendees, um, the question was a YouTube link will be shared for this. Um, 
I'm not sure if there will be a YouTube link, but then we will definitely have this as an on-demand session on our website post this event. So feel free to watch it if you have missed it. I know a few of our attendees had experiences initially to uh, view the content. Uh, we are sorry for that. Um, and we'll make sure the next sessions go seamless. And uh, lastly, you can stay here or attend other explore or explore other sessions during the short break. Um, the next session in this track is new revenue streams with partner portals and data monetization. I hope uh, you take you enjoy the short break and come back um, and tune into the next session. Enjoy MicroStrategy World 2022, and thank you so much, both speakers, for such an insightful presentation. Thanks a lot. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, everyone.